This is the Information Brief. A Holyoke Media Service with the most recent updates of relevance in the city of Holyoke and the Pioneer Valley. I'm Johan Rashivega and this is Information for Tuesday, May 5th of 2020. Holyoke Public School Superintendent shares his expectation of his successor as a receiver. The Wisteria Hearst Museum is compiling stories to document the COVID-19 quarantine and experiences of the community as part of the current history. Mass Hire Holyoke is open virtually to offer their Youth Works application for summer 2020 employment program. And we have the most recent numbers at the Holyoke Soldiers Home. This is the information. In a conversation with Holyoke Media, Holyoke Public School Superintendent Dr. Steve Schreich shared with us a comprehensive view of what has been the last five years working with the school district. One particular point in the conversation was to name the most outstanding aspects he could like to make aware of to the new superintendent on the Holyoke Public Schools and the Holyoke community. What are the main points that you would like this new person to really know and understand in order to continue this work after all the learning that you had yourself by being with us uh, for these five years in Holyoke? Yeah, um, I've thought a lot about that, and I'm, I'll do my best to be succinct with that answer. Um, you know, I think, first of all, um, that the people who are jet, the, to listen to people um, and connect with those people who are uh, most uh, committed and, um, and, and connected to the schools. Um, you know, there are a lot of people who have stayed with the district through the change. Um, and who are, and who, many of them are very quiet. They do their work humbly, and they are um, so passionate about working in this community. Those are the voices. Sometimes it's hard to find them because there's a lot of other noise from people who don't um, have the best interest of our children or know our schools in the ways that the, the folks who do, you know, the amazing passion of work for children. And that's not, that's at all levels of our organization. There's so much talent and the, and the people uh, who are, who are, and ask our kids, ask kids and families who those people are, because they will tell you, I never ask, who don't you like? I always ask, tell me who has made the most profound difference. And I would ask, I would tell the new receiver, ask those questions and hold on to those people you know, that, and, and, and listen to those people. I think secondly, um, you know, I think, um, I, I, I think it's important that the, that the new receiver doesn't um, over, overturn some of the work that's begun around, you know, an equity driven agenda, an agenda that's focused on, you know, access to more, for more students um, at all different levels. Uh, more early childhood opportunities for students, um, you know, uh, improving the middle school experience. I not only do I be, obviously I believe and I'm biased that it's the right work, but I also think that the fatigue has will set in, and, and there's been so much change that started before my tenure and then con, you know has continued in terms of changing. And while five years um, seems like a long, well, and and I, education that's a long time for a school leader. It's um you know, for our folks, you know, they can't, they can't, um, I think it, it's hard for them to digest another change in focus and direction. And there's some really strong leaders throughout the system that we just need to go deeper with the work and not change course. I mean, that's, that's, I think, really important. Um, the other, I think, advice is, um, you know, I've really struggled to understand mental health um, in, in ways. Um, and, and I would say, um, well, yeah, and I and I I feel like I need, I think the new leader will need a, a crash course in in trying to understand it. I I, 
you know, especially in the youth of, of today and understanding the Holyoke context as well. I mean, our students and families uh, struggle um, on so many levels uh, with um, issues that, um, that is hard to comprehend unless you, you know, gets back to what I said before, unless you really try hard to connect with the, 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 the actual families that the school system serves, not the people who don't have children in the schools, but have a lot to say about the schools. Um, and then the final thing um, I would say is the Holyoke context is very unique. I've worked in a lot of other urban districts. And again, while I said it when I first arrived, I would reiterate it again. And, you know, I just, and I think a lot of leaders say, oh, you know, we need to make sure we tailor the, the, the solutions to, for improvement to the community we serve. It, it's so important in Holyoke that it doesn't become some, um, uh, you know, turnaround blueprint. Uh, it, you know, you don't, it's not bought in a box. You just don't find that in a box. It has to be tailored uh, to the community in which you serve. And I would encourage the receiver uh, to really understand that uh, or to try to understand the context. And I'm going to do my part as much as I can to help um, him or her understand what the context is of the community that they're um, coming into. If you want to watch the full interview with Dr. Steve Schreck, you can find it in our Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. This interview was produced by Natalia Muñoz. We entered the eighth week of quarantine with a stay-at-home advisory, schools and non-essential businesses closed, orders to wear face coverings, and we have been using social media and video conference as the way to communicate and interact. All during a pandemic that has entirely changed our lives for the past two months. This is a historic moment. And the Holyoke City historian Penny Martorell had an idea to document history collectively as it happens. Hi, I'm Penny Martorell. I'm the curator at Wisteria Hearst, and I'm also Holyoke City historian. And um, in collaboration with my director, Kate Chrysler, we decided to see what we could put up online to capture what's happening with people locally and how they're feeling and what kind of things they want to share and hold in memory for the community later. It is really amazing to be able not only to have history uh, under, under your, your research and your custody, but now this amazing, possibly once in a lifetime opportunity of writing and documenting history as it happens. Exactly, exactly. And part of this comes from you know, being a historian and being exposed to people's journals and daily writings from the past. Sometimes when you look at those things, they're just mundane things that they wrote about what the weather was and where they were and who they were with and where they went. Um, doesn't seem very exciting, but in retrospect, you realize that some of the things that they experienced were unique for that time. And we, are in a very, very unique position right now of what the United States is going through and our communities are going through right now has, is unprecedented. And so we had to figure out a way, some way to capture something of that and to hear the community's voice because what I see is one thing, but what you see is another thing and how it affects individuals is very different. So this idea of uh, creating a collective memory that could be also part of the history, what exactly means for the community to be able to participate? Because this is pretty much an open invitation for everyone in the whole community to, to contribute with, with, it, with its own his, uh, story, part of the history. Right. So um, we are a community archive. Uh, taxpayer dollars go to keeping the history that we keep. And so uh, rather than being a gatekeeper and deciding what needs to be saved, um, we're really looking to the community to tell us what is meaningful to them. Uh, and we would love to get a cross view of older folks, younger folks, um, D different communities in the you know different neighborhoods how it's affecting families how it's affecting school children elders all those kinds of points of view because 
that's what makes history so rich is when you have the more point of views that to see how it's not only one line of story, there's multiple stories that can be told. Yeah. So how can people get those stories be part of this archive? So there is a link on our webpage. On our front page, there's a banner that um, it says, community response to the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. And it's a, a banner, white banner with little purple uh, balls on it. So you can just click on that and that will take you to a Google form. And in order to use a Google form, which is a very simple uh, way of collecting things, uh, you do need to have a, a Gmail account. So um, you would have to set up that, but if you already have a Gmail account, you can just go in, it'll ask you a few questions. It will also describe the project. Um, the few things, the few limitations are on the size of the files. So it can't be larger than 10 megabytes. So you have to look at the size of your files, um, for especially audio or video. They tend to be a little bit larger than just a, a standard image or text document. And then um, just being responsible in terms of privacy. So, you know, you want to refer to your own situation and uh, not reveal other people's medical issues because we know that's, you know, that's affecting a lot of people that way. Um, and, you know, tell us, tell us your story. Um, like I said, there's one field that if you just want to type in a quick note of what you're feeling today um, or reflection that you've considered, um, you can do that. You can upload a text file or a document that you've already written of a, a JPEG or photograph image of something that you've seen that's unique to the time um, or a video or audio recording such as these. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, pretty simple. Um, we're, like I said, we're kind of winging it. Uh, we're, it's going to be interesting to see what people want to save and want to share. And um, it'll be held in confidence for five years until the um, fifth anniversary in May. And then we will um, share the information with the public. So that's another thing you want to consider with what you're sharing, that it will be part of the public record so people can use it to uh, research later on. And again, this is a really important part of, of keeping history on the current days we are having and during this, this year, 2020, and thinking on future generations when they look back at this year and, and see, okay, it happened, it, whether it was a pandemic, uh, but how people manage to get by day by day. Because you're going to have, of course, the official information, the, the official story, but then those small details that you were referring on the, on the archives, those are stories that most of the most of the time, they, they only get the chance to be passed on by, by um, oral, oral way when generations through families. Oh, yeah, I remember when your grand, 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 grand uh, parents did this. This is a perfect opportunity to do it in a way that it could be shared with the community, through the community, and, and, and utilizing the technology we are utilizing just right now in order to keep in touch. Yeah, exactly. And part of this came from a conversation I had with my grandmother way back when about the Spanish flu. I remember her telling me about her experience during that in 1918. And then I, you know, when this whole pandemic started, I checked in with my mom and asked her if she had ever experienced anything to this level. And she couldn't recall anything. And, you know, you realize what a unique position we're in right now and to let it go and not collect those personal stories would be um, uh, yeah a letdown for history you know for future generations and so yeah and like you said it's the personal stories the family stories the um, the stories of the community that people really find interesting uh, the official record is there there's going to be statistics and tracking and all of that we don't need to we don't have to worry about that being stored for history 
we do need to worry about the personal stories and um, how it affecting how it's affecting and changing our lives each day that we're you know it goes by I mean how many weeks has it been already and it the the changes that we've adjusted to in our lives we've just kind of rolled with and um, yeah there needs to be some way to document that and this seemed like a, a quick and easy way to start that um, and I'm hoping that the community will find some time and put some energy into doing just that. The information for submission is available at the wisteriahurst.org website and also is available in both English and Spanish. So it is expected that submissions can also be bilingual or even multilingual, right? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Uh, there's no limitations on, on that. Um, yeah, language-wise, that would be perfect. <laughs> well, Penny, thank you so much for for doing this for continuing doing doing this work of uh keeping the history alive and now writing it as it happens this is certainly a great idea that uh it, it talks about uh journalism history and documenting our lives because this i think and i know i'm positive it's going to be of a lot of help for future generations to learn and to see the perspective of what was live in 2020 yeah thank you johan for um giving voice to this and uh helping us share it with the community appreciate it in other information the youth service office at mass higher holyoke career center is taking a more remote virtual approach to continue providing services to both the youth as well as all members of the community in their job search and career readiness needs Mass Hire Holyoke is open virtually and they are promoting an electronic version of their Youth Works application for summer 2020 employment program. With the creation of a virtual application, Mass Hire is able to commence the application process for youth to land a summer job. This program is designed for youth ages 14 to 21 years old and this application is open to all youth that are currently living in Holyoke. To participate in the Youth Works 2020 employment program, candidates should go through the eligibility requirements that are addressed in the application. Mass Hire Holyoke explained that the application itself is not a promise of employment and it will be used more as an initiation as families will need to follow up with the Youth Services Office at Mass Hire Holyoke in order to complete the process. To fill out the Youth Works 2020 interest form, you can visit the Mass Hire Holyoke website or you can follow the link we have shared on the posting of this information brief on our Facebook page. The application will be open until May 29th at 5 p.m. And regarding the Holyoke Soldiers Home, the numbers provided by the state as of this Tuesday are Testing results of all residents. 80 veteran residents have tested positive. 61 veteran residents have tested negative. At the location, 104 residents are on-site and 37 residents are off-site. Of those 37, 32 residents are at a dedicated skilled nursing unit at Holyoke Medical Center, and five residents are receiving acute care off-site. There has been 84 veteran residents deaths, 71 positive, 12 negative, and one unknown. As of employees, 81 employees have tested positive. Stay in the know with Holyoke Media. We are reporting different announcements, services, and updates in the local, state, and federal level related to the COVID-19 emergency. This service is available in English and Spanish for our community in the city of Holyoke and the Pioneer Valley. This is information we have for today. We will continue updating and following up as soon as more information becomes available. If you have questions or information to share with us as well as your concerns, you can contact us on our different outlets on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and podcast distribution platforms. Also, you can watch us on Holyoke Cable Channel 15. 
Remember to wash your hands and keep a safe distance if you need to be out and also remember to wear a face covering as the statewide order begins this Wednesday, May 6th. This has been the information brief for May 5th of 2020. I'm Johan Rashivega. You're watching Hollywood Media.